to another existence. I don't claim anything because I don't know anything. For that matter, no human being knows. But I do claim that it is possible to construct an apparatus which will be so delicate that if there are personalities in another existence who wish to get in touch with us, this apparatus would at least give them a better opportunity. Hands off the table, please. Sorry. April 27, 2002. 9.17 a.m. period. Subject's name is Greg Liam. He is 27 it's years Craig. old. Excuse me? My name is Craig, not Greg. It's Craig, with a C. Subject Craig Liam is 27 years old, period. The subject has consented to participate in accordance with IRB guidelines. Mr. Liam? Mr. Liam? Yes, sir. Please state for the video record that you understand the nature of this study. I do. Whoa. Mr. Liam. Have you removed all credit cards, watches, jewelry, etc.? I'm sorry, what? Metal. Just to confirm, you have no metal rods, pins, plates, or artificial parts of any kind? Well... Okay, no. Mr. Liam, my assistant will now be closing the door, effectively sealing you in the room. Uh, do not, under any circumstances, touch that telephone until it rings. Let us know immediately if you feel any nausea. I'm sorry, did you say nausea? This is Dr. Carl Meiselhoff proceeding with human trial number 31 of the Edison Spectrograph EM field receiver. The subject reports a recent loss of his younger sister, Jennifer Liam, period. Transcranial and transoptic electromagnetic field dispersers have been placed, period. Followed by injection of ketamine, 20 milligrams IV. Infrasound frequency will begin at 19 hertz with 2 hertz incremental decrease every 5 seconds, period. Mr. Liam. Are you ready to begin? How we doing, Greg? Look, I'm fine, okay? Let's just, just let me know when you start. We've started. Hear sirens and a knocking. It sounds like knocking. Is someone trying to get into the room? No, not yet. Please remain in your seats and try to describe as best you can what you're experiencing. I feel. I feel like someone's here. A presence. Professor? Professor, I think I changed my mind. You can go ahead and answer it. Hello? Connection secured at 8 hertz and 109 decibels, period. 67 seconds elapsed. Hello? Uh, no, I, I can't hear you, but I can hear you breathing. You have to...
please rise? We assume death to be the worst thing that could possibly happen to any person. How very wrong this idea is. Right, I need help over here. Mercy. Hey, Sheriff, we got it. She's a 33 year old with a gunshot wound to her abdomen. Domestic dispute, husband attacks her and the kids. Sirenas. Nabra la puerta. We're good. Go ahead. This is Marcella Gutierrez. Gunshot wound to the abdomen. No allergies. We have two milligrams of Versid, 200 of ketamine, fully reversed, and she's doing well. Hey, Marcella. The surgery's over. You're just waking up. That's the bien. Ya terminó la cirugía. ¿Se siente bien? Vi mis bebés. Están en un buen lugar. En un hermoso lugar. She says she saw her babies. They're in a beautiful place. Who of us would really want to remain on Earth with all its never-ending struggles? Death is a natural step. She saw her kids. Yeah, she was there. Her ex-husband shot them both. No, she thinks she saw them after. It was probably this. She left it on your cart. You leaving your narcs on your cart? Anyway, ketamine is known to induce near-death experiences. Really? Oh, yeah. We had a guy in faculty who was injecting it into his grad students for a research study. IRB shut him down. I didn't know this stuff. Who's my patient? <laughs> it's 8 o'clock? Tonight? Yeah. Go ahead and bring your girlfriend. Um, okay. Cool. Oh, see you tonight. Yeah. What are you thinking for dinner tonight? Uh, actually, Devin and Donna invited us over to their place tonight. I don't know, Ray. I'm not feeling great. They're and... colleagues. It'll be fun. Come on, don't make me go alone. I just thought I thought that you know we could have our own celebration tonight. We can celebrate there. That doesn't sound right. No, it's true. For every 35 pounds he gains, a man loses an inch. Oprah wouldn't lie. Well, as long as it's evidence-based science. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, that's not true, is it, uh, Abby? Oh, no, I'm fine. Thank you. Oh, come on, Abby. Drink up. Devin's on call, but what's your excuse? Pregnant? <laughs> oh, congratulations! No way. That is so great. Thanks. How many weeks? Uh, six, I think. Well, I'd like to propose a toast. Oh. Oh. To Abby and Brayden on the verge of a new life. In more ways than one. You know, Abby, I forget. What is it that you do? I'm an artist. Really? That's amazing. Yeah, so I'm experimenting with uh, mixed media right now, so gravestone rubbings and watercolors, things like that. She's really talented, Francine. She came and taught in my pottery class. Our lives are going to change soon. You have to let go of your old life. I promise you, you won't miss it. Who of us would really want to remain here on Earth with all its never-ending struggles? Death is a natural step. Brayden, I have to say I love Abby. I mean, I think she's great. Thanks, All I'm saying is Brayden is the guy. Abby is every guy's dream. It's the worst of all. Seriously, if anything ever happens to you, I'll take care of Abby. Hey, that's not out of line at all. It's okay. I am officially taking her off the market. No way. No way. <sighs> Don't let Donna see that she's going to upgrade. Too late. She helped me pick it out. Sweetie, it's Donna. You okay? I need help in here! Brayden! What eye has not seen, what ear has not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man. What things God has prepared for them that love him. I wake you? Is mm. I okay? Yeah, you're fine. Oh, thank God. 
I'm so worried about the baby. Someone's at the door, babe. They can wait. No, get it. I have to pee anyway. Everything go okay? No, she did great, Brayden. And the blood loss looked a lot worse than it was. Well, listen, you know, I mean, me and Donna were just so sorry. Dev, thanks again. I'm glad it was you on call. Did she wake? Yeah, she just woke up. She was so excited about the baby. She really wanted it. We both did. Abby, where are you? Brandon, what happened? Abby. I didn't know what to do, I just wanted to get home. I know, sweetie, I know. I'm so sorry you found out that way. No, Brandon, I'm sorry, I lost your baby. Hey, stop that, so... stop that, don't talk like that. This was not your fault. I don't know. Abby, listen to me, new rule. No blaming ourselves for things we can't control. We accept life as it comes. Okay, I like rules. I love you to death, you know that? Me too, I'm driving around right now looking for you. You are? Yes. Now, where are you? I'm taking you home. Um, Franklin. Franklin? Franklin and what? <laughs> Abby! Holy shit! Abby, are you okay? Holy shit! Abby, I'm so Just sorry. Just unlock the door. Abby, I'm freezing my ass off. Don't unlock if you're lifting the handle. Uh, okay. Abby, don't move. What? Brandon? I'm here. I'm here. I hear sirens. Brandon, get the door. Someone's knocking. Abby, stay awake. Come on, don't close your eyes. Stay awake. Abby, look at me. Look at me right here. You don't go anywhere without me. Uh, look, I, uh, I have something for you. O open your eyes. Hey, buddy, it's Devin. Uh, me and Donna were thinking maybe you should come and stay with us for a little while. It's probably not a good idea for you to be alone right now. Hi, Abby. Hi, Faden. What are you doing? <clears throat> You're very pretty. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You're very handsome. You're pretty cute. You're, you're... I'm a scientist. I'm... I'm... Here, there. There we go. Yeah, in the medical profession. Trust me, these hands have put people to sleep and brought them back to life. <laughs> That's so hot. It's the button on the side. You just... You oh, there you go. it forward and back. Babe. Here, I'll hold the camera so you can... <laughs> what is it? 
You better not have I'm What? in. Earrings! Earrings! Yay! All set. <laughs> oh, almost. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, it's perfect. It's beautiful. Thank you. Hi, this is Brayden. And this is Abby. We're not here, but if you think about it, who is? What was that? What? I was being existential. Abby, just record a normal message. Hey buddy, it's Devin. Uh, take as much time off as you need, but I'm thinking maybe if you got back to work, it might help you get, uh, well... Anyway, give me a call when you're ready. Yeah, listen, um, the other day you said something about a guy on faculty doing research with ketamine. Who was that? Oh, oh yeah. Dr. Uh, Meiselhoff, Dr. Karl Meiselhoff. He had this crazy idea about using electromagnetic fields for anesthesia. He wanted me to use it for his radical prostate. He was a patient? Yeah. Dr. Karl Meiselhoff. Meiselhoff? What, uh, what department was he in? Surgery? Medicine? He's in, uh... Physics. Physics? Yeah. He's a PhD. Listen, Braden, I'm here for you. I really am, but... Can we talk about this tomorrow? I got a cranium at 6.30. Yeah. Um, sure. Of course. Sorry. Thanks, Bob. Anytime. <laughs> I mean it. I know. And this leads us to the ultimate big question. Why do the laws of physics in our classical world, seem to break down at the subatomic or the quantum world? Shouldn't there be one law that unifies everything? Shouldn't there be a theory of everything? Well, it seems that the answer may lie in incredibly small particles of vibrating energy that we call superstrings, or string theory. When you vibrate a superstring, the vibrations produce unique subatomic particles, like an electron. In a sense, the universe that we know is the result of a symphony being played at the subatomic level by vibrating superstrings. Are you with me so far? Выключи. Выключи. Нет, нет, нет. Еще шесть секунд. Там очень красиво. Там очень красиво. Welcome back to Tree Science. I'm your host, Sean Fox, and today we're here with one of the country's leading physicists, Dr. Carl Meiselhoff. Dr. Meiselhoff, you've long been regarded as something of a rebel in the field of particle physics and other dimensions. I'm not a rebel. I am doing the work of a long legacy of rebels, but I'm not a rebel. Well, the physics community has long relied on large, expensive particle colliders to study such things as fusion and string theory. You claim to have found a different path. Well, it's, uh, it's very complex, Sean. <laughs> Uh, but the fundamentals of our work suggest that at the moment of death, the human brain can perceive the subatomic realm, or quantum universe, if you will. So are you saying your subjects are people or ghosts? Are you saying there's a difference? <laughs> if someone communicates or travels from one membrane to another, that which makes it human remains intact. <laughs> Anybody that's familiar with Niels Bohr would know that. Of course. We found that by using a combination of stimuli, um, we can mimic the moment of death in the human brain. We actually are tricking the brain into thinking it's dying. Define stimuli. Low frequency sound waves, medicinal agents, that sort of thing. Really? What sort of medicinal agents are we talking about here? Well, we tried several, but we found the most success with ketamine. May I help you? Oh, I'm looking for Dr. Carl Meiselhoff. Is he home? 
No, I'm sorry, he's not. I'm his wife, Margaret. Nice to meet you, Margaret. My name is Braden Taylor. I was just hoping to speak with your husband about his work. I'm sorry, that's not possible. I don't need much time. I just have a Dr. few- Dr. Meiselhoff is no longer with us. Oh. Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. No, thank you. I just recently went through a similar loss myself. My fiance. I lost her last week. Well, I'm sorry. You're far too young to know that kind of pain. With all due respect, ma'am, I don't think anyone's old enough to know that pain. Would you care for a cup of coffee? Now tell me, what do you do? I'm an anesthetist. Good for you. I don't believe in God either. What? No, anesthetist. Anesthesia. I've been doing some research on the use of electromagnetic- You're not the first person to come around. And you didn't come here to find out how to put people to sleep. My guess is that there's someone you're looking to wake up. No? Thomas Edison gave an interview with Scientific American Magazine. He stated that he's working on a device that would allow those that have died to communicate with those that are living. Apparently, he actually built a prototype, and generations of scientists, including your husband, have worked on it. I see. I thought he might know where the device is. The only way you're going to have a conversation with the dead is if you join them. Perhaps. Let me ask you this. If you found it, what would you do with that device? It wouldn't help you find someone you've lost. You'd only lose yourself. Is that a price you're willing to pay? So it does exist. You're not answering my question. I would pay any price for Abby. I would do anything to have her back. Choose your words carefully, young man. You know, I have some clutter in my garage. Maybe you can help me move some boxes. pile of junk in that. Oh, 
Dr. Lewis Mastenbrook, our field's connected. Thank you for the coffee. What do you want? Do you have a little Splenda? No, I mean, what do you want with me and all this? Nothing. I'm just following instructions. So, no on the Splenda. Instructions? From who? Karl Meiselhoff. Meiselhoff is dead. Yes, I know. Suicide. Oh, you didn't know that. Carbon monoxide poisoning. Fired up the Lexus, closed the garage door. He was a friend of yours? He was my mentor. And yes, he was a friend. You're a physicist. Among other things, Carl and I were part of a scientific think tank of sorts. The God Model Project. You work for the government? No, it's international. It's a coalition of the world's top physicists. The goal is to define the rules of the known universe before the end of the century. So you're like scary smart? Mostly just smart. And what is it that you do? Anesthesia. Hmm. Meiselhoff's widow gave me the equipment. You know, you're one of a handful of people who's ever actually seen the Edison spectrographic EM field. Where did you hear that? Where did I hear what? It's very beautiful over there. Where'd you hear that? Those were his last words. Who? Thomas Edison. Most of this stuff is pretty outdated. I'm thinking if we replace some no. of it No, you replace one component, the whole thing can fail. It all works, we're just not exactly sure why. You can add to the chain, you can't change the links. I tried reproducing this on my own, but without success. For instance, this phone is mostly copper wiring. All the guts have been replaced with non-ferrous metals. It's not magnetic. Right. And it doesn't interfere with the high EMFs of the helmet. Those electric dreadlocks almost gave me a seizure. Psychoacoustics, infrasound, sound waves generated at very low frequencies, below what most people can hear. You know, nothing's calibrated here. You could have killed yourself. At low frequencies, infrasonic emitters really mess with the body. The Russians tried to use it as a weapon. It literally scares the shit out of you. Rapid pulse, gagging, vomiting, bowel spasms. Uncontrolled defecation, vibrating visual field. Vibrating visual field? Yeah, the eye vibrates so severely that the intraocular pressure raises to the point of rupture. I heard voices. They were hard to make out. Did you see anything? Um, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm hungry too. Get you boys anything to eat? Maybe later. Can we get a basket of bread for now? Sure. What is sweetie? Louis, what is going on here? What do physics and super strings have to do with the afterlife? Excuse me, can we get more jam, please? 
I'm oddly attracted to her. String theory, right? String theory. What do you know about it, Brandon? Not much. Um, the universe is made up of tiny vibrating strings. A theory of everything. Right. A unified theory of everything. It's the holy grail of physics. It makes sense mathematically, but we don't know any of it. This is science that is literally pushing the envelope. Sounds more like philosophy. They don't give out Nobel Prizes for philosophy. Are you implying you've devised an experiment that will prove the existence of superstrings? No. Thomas Edison did. Tesla did. Sir William Crook, J. Gilbert Wright, William O'Neill, they all did. Every person that has worked on this since the 1920s did. But no one made the connection until Meiselhoff. Connection to what? M theory. M for Meiselhoff? M for membrane. Some people, myself included, think that this is where we live. On a membrane in a larger dimensional space. Now this jam is us. We are stuck on this membrane. Nothing gets off the membrane except for one thing. What? Gravity. Or more precisely, gravitons. I see. And where do these gravitons go? To another membrane. There's more than one. Most likely infinite membranes, all parallel to our own and all with their own universe. Uh, you boys doing okay? Actually, I, I could... We're fine. Thanks. Our personalities, the essence of who we are, is an electromagnetic field created by our brain. Meisehoff made the connection between electromagnetic fields and gravity. To put it simply, when we die, everything that we are, our soul, hitches a ride on gravity to another membrane. At least that's what Meisehoff thinks. Thought. But he didn't have the expertise to prove it. Uh, this one's not working. Oh. Don't bother. The magnetic coils on the helmet erased every one of them in your wallet. Lewis, can you really do this? Can you really find someone after their... I've been working on something that will allow us to navigate the quantum realm. Not only can I find somebody, I can bring them back. But I need you to get one more person. This person will act as a conduit that will allow my equipment to make contact with the membrane. We don't need anybody else. I can handle it. Trust me. You can't handle half of what this guy can. What guy? From the Best Church of God Radio Network, this is Break On Through to the Lord. Join us for the next hour as medium Craig Leeham shows us firsthand the rewards awaiting those who live a Christian life. Hi, I'm Pastor Dave. If you're a returning listener, welcome back. If you're new to the program, well then, you are in for something special. As always, I'm here with Craig Leeham. For the past two years, Craig's been revealing to us not only how much God loves us in this life, but in the next as well. How are you tonight, Craig? I'm fine, Pastor Dave, just fine. I'm looking forward to helping some of those of you out there who, although you've accepted Christ into your lives, having a little trouble feeling God's love due to the loss of a loved one. As you may suspect, Craig's been blessed with a special gift. A tragic accident robbed him of his sight in this life, but the Lord has allowed him to see into the next. Ladies and gentlemen, Craig Leeham doesn't merely talk to the dearly departed, he sees them. Craig, I, I think we all want to know, what does heaven look like? Well, Pastor Dave, it's, uh, it's very beautiful over there. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Okay, let's get started. We have our first caller already. It's a Judith LaMalfa from Colorado Springs. Are you there, Judith? Hi, Pastor Dave. How are you? I'm great. Thanks to Jesus. Hi, Craig. Hi, Judith. How can we help you tonight? Well, my husband passed away six months ago. Oh, I'm so sorry, Judith. Thank you, Craig. It was an accident. <sighs> oh, that's okay, Judith. Take your time. We never got to say our goodbyes. That bastard drunk driver. <laughs> okay, Judith, I, I can tell that this is a very uh, emotional uh, issue for you. If you can, I, I, I'd like you to try to let go of your anger for right now and think about on how much you miss and love your husband. What was his name? Gordon. He had black hair and these big old ears. That's enough. I don't want you to tell me anymore. All I need is his name. Hello, 
Uh, Judith, what is it you would like to say? Judith? He's calling out to you. Gordon, oh, I miss you so much. Judith, I, I didn't mean to leave. I, I tried to tell them. He didn't mean to leave, he tried to tell them. I'm sorry, but don't you hand me that crap. Maybe, if you wouldn't have been driving with your buddy Jack Daniels, I'd still have a husband. Oh, Judith. I know you're just mad, because you love me. I love you too. I love you too. He's holding something out. It's something for you. Tell him he can keep it. Right up his ass. Soon, Judith. We will again soon. It's a seashell. He says soon. You will again soon. He picked that up off the beach for me on our first date. We met in Santa Barbara. I buried that shell with him. Oh, Gordon. He's leaving now. Gordon. Goodbye. Please. Please don't go. Thank you, Craig. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much, Judith, for calling. God bless you both. Thank you, Judith. All right, folks, we're going to take a little break while our sponsor tells you how to keep your financial future safe with gold coins. Show's over. I don't do private sessions. I'm not here for a second. Then take your piss and get out. I'm here to ask for your help with a research study I'm involved in. Look, I have a car waiting for me, okay? I need to... My name is Braden Taylor. We're continuing Dr. Meiselhoff's work and... Meiselhoff? Yes. You tell that rat bastard that I won't see him again until he's dead and rotting in hell. Carl Meiselhoff is dead. He killed himself three months ago. We have the equipment, all of it. What do you mean, we? Myself and Louis Mastenbrook. Mastenbrook. So why are you so interested in Meiselhoff's work? You got a sudden urge to shit your pants and turn your eyeballs inside out? Uh, well, I guess you could say my story's a lot like that woman you spoke with. Except, I don't believe in psychics. What do you know about Lewis? Not much. He sort of showed up and offered his services. You let a total stranger into your house? Uh, he seems smart, but a little short on social skills. I know he's a physicist. He's not just a physicist. He's the physicist. Guy can't leave the country without a special passport in case he's kidnapped and tortured. He was at the top of his game until he dropped out the face of the earth. What happened? Nobody knows. But apparently you found him. Come to think of it, sounds more like he found you. Yeah. You know, I'm starting to get a little creeped out by that. This is Craig Liam. It's been a long time, Greg. Craig. Craig. It's good to see you again. Well, I wish I could say the same, Lewis. It appears I've put you in an uncomfortable position, Braden. I'm uh, partly responsible for Mr. Liam's current condition. I was a grad student, and Lewis offered to help me with my thesis if I participated in a little research with Dr. Carl Meiselhoff. It appears you've gained other gifts. Well, then what do you say we poke out your eyes and see what gifts you inherit? I understand your bitterness. But apparently you've chosen to accept my invitation in spite of that. He makes a good point, Craig. Where is this thing? Would you like to see it? You'd be happy to know, Greg, that I've added some new components that greatly improve its accuracy. Yeah? Well, you can add all the technology you want to this thing, Lewis. It's still just an electric Ouija board. No, there's nothing supernatural. It follows the laws of nature, rules that we almost completely understand. <laughs> For fools rush in where angels fear to tread. Excuse me? You'll never understand all of the rules, Lewis. The God model won't allow it. What's he talking about, Lewis? I understand more than you think. <laughs> no, no. You think you understand more than you think. <laughs> Yeah. 
I need to grow a tail. Where's the can? Come on. I'll show you. Blind, dude. Brayden, I know what I'm doing. I haven't seen you do anything yet. Lewis, what is the God model? It's irrelevant. Not according to Craig. Albert Einstein came up with it about 60 years ago. He was giving a lecture at Princeton. One of his students asked, did he believe in God? Einstein drew a square on the board. This square represents all the knowledge of how the universe works. He then drew another square inside it, like this. This square represents everything we've learned so far. Einstein divided the inner square into four sections. Now, everything on the left side consists of things that move slower than half the speed of light, and everything on the right side faster than half the speed of light. The top half contains everything larger than an atom, you, me, planets, galaxies, etc. The bottom half obviously contains things smaller than an atom, protons, neutrons, electrons. Strings. Exactly. Einstein then explained that each of these boxes represented a different area of physics, classical, relativity, quantum, and relativity quantum. Each time we make a new discovery, we push this inner box a little closer to the edge of the outer box. For example, M theory, if correct, would put us here. How long until the box is filled in? Oddly enough, one of his students asked that question as well. Einstein answered, never. Why not? Because then we'd know everything. Because then we'd be God. So, where does our little experiment fit into this diagram? That's why the God model's irrelevant. You need to know, Lewis plans to subject you to that device again. How do you feel about that? Well, I've already lost my eyes and control of my bowels. So, what else do I have to lose? Your life. Life is never lost, Braden. It's relocated. That's why I'm here. You're looking to relocate? No, I'm looking to locate. I, um, uh, I was young and stupid and and my, my father left us really early on, so I felt like I had to be the man of the house, you know? So, uh... I, I bought a gun. For protection, you know? And well, because it made me feel like a badass. <laughs> oh, the day I brought it home, my sister found it. And, you know, my mother never really forgave me. You know what I mean? How do you... <laughs> you know, it's okay. You can cry if you want to. No. I can't. Uh-oh. <coughs> can you give me one of those masks? Yes, it is. <coughs> I feel woozy. What is that, Lewis? It's my contribution. It's a computer. Quantum. Quantum topographical. So, this is better than a regular computer. It can calculate in one hour what your computer would take 300 years. Yeah, it's a little bit better. We can decipher any code in the world. And with Craig's help, it's gonna allow us to contact Abby. There's gonna be no noise, no interference. It's gonna isolate her electromagnetic pattern on the membrane. What are you saying? He's saying he wants to trace the call. Our personalities survive after we die, and the gravitons that carry them off leave a trail. Meiselhoff knew this. A map to the afterlife. A map to heaven. Or hell. Look, you're gonna be able to talk to Abby. You're not gonna have to suffer the adverse effects of the equipment. You're welcome. Pussy. 
We're gonna have to go to the hospital. I, we don't have any more ketamine. Mm. Forget the drugs. I brought my own. <laughs> Buckle up. You ready in there, champ? You know what you're doing, right? I mean, this is dangerous. Oh no, this is very dangerous. Okay, Craig, starting. How you feeling, Craig? Awesome. He's drinking. Is that okay? Can you do that? How are we doing in there, Craig? Craig! Hello? Uh -huh. Are you there? Why did you bring me here? Abby, bring you where? Bring you where? Abby. I'm talking, I almost got it. She died. Why did you say it was snowing, wasn't it? Where is she? Where do we go when we die? They're all around us. They're universal. Our universe. The membranes both occupy the same space. What? We can't travel there because there's nowhere to travel to. We don't go anywhere. What happened, Lewis? It was too much. In order to get any data, I had to crank everything up and... Couldn't take it. Apparently, to make this thing work, you have to induce seizures and fry a person's brain, ultimately making it a one-way trip. What if we shut the brain down? How so? You used ketamine before to mimic a near-death state. What if we went further? What if we induced a general anesthetic, enough to suppress the seizure stage, then let the subject emerge from anesthesia once contact is made? It's plausible, I suppose. Increase the seizure threshold would allow Craig to Not tolerate Craig. What you're suggesting means that we need another person, one who's qualified to administer anesthesia. spoke to her. I heard her voice. Brayden, this is somebody's voice. Well, I guess they got some girl sitting on a cell phone outside your house. That's your proof? Voicemail from heaven and a bucket of melted wax? That is not evidence-based science. I blame myself. I mean, I should have been keeping a lot closer an eye on you after Look, you I was along. depressed after Abby died. I admit that, but I wasn't irrational. You weren't irrational? You let two total strangers with suspect credentials convince you that they can defy the laws of physics 
that they can contact the afterlife? They're living in your house? You don't even know who they are. I know enough. What's this? Evidence. See, after I found out you were investigating Karl Meiseloff, I did a little investigating on my own. Turns out your uh, genius buddy killed the last guy that he worked with. If that's true, why isn't he in prison? They never found a body. Any coffee left, boys? Hospital? Yeah. Taking a lot of call lately? I don't worry about it. Dev, I'll be back at work soon, I promise. Brayden, I'll cover your hours, you know that. But I do think it would be a good idea for you to go back to work. Focus on the real world for a change. Good to see you, Alan. Yeah, don't be a stranger. How's he doing? He's a mess. So what's the mold of? Mold? Yeah, it's like one of the molds from my pottery class. So what is it? Love you. Anesthesia, we're not supposed to be using cell phones in the OR. Yeah, usually it doesn't take three hours to do a lap call either, but here we are. Hey, honey. Dev, there's something here you need to see. suicide you killed him you killed him with this it wasn't suicide and it certainly wasn't homicide you are lying he isn't lying carl meiselhoff isn't dead so he's alive no Braden, listen to me meiselhoff wanted to make things right redemption for what he did to craig and his sister she's stuck in between membranes that we created. What I need is for you to stop with all this metaphysical horse shit and just leave. We lost him. I lost him. You know what? When we lose someone in the OR, it's usually because... You don't understand, Brayden. I lost him. He's not here. He's somewhere else. Somebody gonna get that? One thing I want to make clear right now, guess who the bitch is going to be if we wind up in the same prison cell. <laughs> so happy, Susan. How is this possible? Sometimes the departed give me things. Physical objects that help those they left behind find their way. Bore. Oh, I'm sorry. Am I boring you? Because by all means, you go right back to packing. Not Bohr. Bohr. B-O-H-R. He's a founder of quantum physics. He found that when you observe a subatomic particle, say an electron, it actually changes its position and velocity. And this is relevant because when we observe the subatomic world, there are no rules. An object can exist in two places at once. Like the seashell. And the ring. Exactly. Abby's final memory was snowfall, and she brought that memory to her afterlife. This membrane that we go to when we die, it's in a state of quantum entanglement until we arrive with all our perceptions and our prejudices ultimately 
defining that world. Heaven exists. Heaven, Nirvana, Hell. It all exists. Not because the Bible or the Quran or Buddha says it does. It exists because we expect it to. There's a dress code for the afterlife. Then why do they bury everyone in suits? All right, it's gonna hurt like a son of a bitch. I promise you're not gonna end up like Craig. You sure about this, Devin? You're asking me now? Listen, if things don't go well, I don't want you to feel, you know, nobody's gonna die. Hey, he's not gonna die, right? No. What's this? Mm -hmm. Glaucoma drug, Tim Optic. I'm also gonna give you an anticholinergic so you don't shit your pants. Good idea, man. More seconds. They're all around us. Where the hell did he go? Lewis, guys, it didn't work. Where's the dog? Jennifer? Jenny. Nobody calls me Jennifer. Where's Brayden? He's here. And there. 
What the hell do you mean by that? It means they flipped membranes. Flip them back! You can't just flip membranes. Only one person can go across at a time. It would mean one of us would have to exchange to get Braden back. Yeah? Well, I nominate you. No. We need him. I was following instructions. Listen, my boy's over there. Bring him back! Just bring him back! It was a necessary evil. Without Carl, we're lost. Figure it out! It's impossible. No. There's a way it can be done. Isn't that right, Craig? Can I have this? It belongs to a friend of mine. Abigail. 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 Yes, Abby. You lost her. Yes, I, I lost her. It was my fault. My fault. That's what he said. Who? Craig. 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 Start talking. Okay, um... Let's say that uh, each of my palms are membranes. And we have one person over here, and we have another over here. Now what Lewis is talking about is an extraction. That's where membranes come in contact, sort of a snatch and grab job. As you can see, it doesn't really work that well. Both parties cease to exist. In fact, we all cease to exist. The universe will cease to exist. Now, what if instead of connecting them, we simply merge them? to occupy the same space for a short period of time and then separate them. And just who's gonna merge these two worlds? You got any more of that ketamine shit? I just want the ring. I have another ring, right here. until it starts. There's a balance. Lewis. Lewis! Yeah, Craig. Thank you. It's me. It's Brayden. I need an answer. We assume death to be the worst thing that could possibly happen to any person. 
how very wrong this idea is. Death is a natural step. Natural step. Freedom. Freedom. Infinite membranes, all parallel to our own, and each with their own universe. Jenny, it's time to go. It was always about bringing someone back. I never intended to send anyone over there. Over where? Dr. Mastenbrook? Dr. Mastenbrook. I'm sorry? You were saying that you sent them over. Over where? Over there. Each to another universe. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds like you're talking about end theory. It's not a theory. It's a law. So you're claiming that membranes exist. How could you possibly know this? Because I've seen them. And they are beautiful. <laughs> 